Welcome to the level 1 quantitative methods summary video series. This video is a summary of the quant reading on common probability distributions. The most basic is a discrete uniform distribution and that is shown right here. So this is one discrete, discrete uniform distribution. So what does this mean? This means that for every value, the probability is equal. Cumulative means that you are simply adding up and you need to be clear about all these answers. So in my regular lecture, I let you calculate this and I don't show you the numbers, but here since we are going through the material very fast, just make sure that F1, which is the symbol for cumulative distribution up to 1, so that's 1 sixth. F4 means up to and including 4, that's 4 over 6. And here is something that people keep messing up on. F100 means that you've gone way beyond. So you've captured all this data and the probability is 1. The cumulative probability is 1. We are still on discrete distribu distributions and here we'll talk about the binomial random variable. This probability is the probability distribution of a binomial random variable for the probability of x successes in n trials and it is calculated using this formula. P is the probability of success on each trial. So remember this formula, this should be done using the calculator. P is the probability of success x is the number of successes and the number of successes do not have to be continuous. They can be if you have a scenario like this, 10 days and success is defined as the stock going up, the stock could go up on any 7 days. It could be the first 7, the last 7, the middle 7 or whatever. And if the probability of up move is 0.6 then p is 0.6. The other scenario is failure, which is 1 minus 0 0.6 probability, so it would be 0.4, and remember this formula. The expected value is n, so in our scenario, if n is 10 and probability is 0 0.6, so 10 into 0 0.6, so the expected value is 6, and the variance would be n, which is 10 into p, which is 0 0.6, into 1 minus p, which is 0.4. Now we come to continuous distributions. So this is a continuous uniform distribution between A and B. The total area here will be 1. So if you can say that a given variable can have any value between A and B, uniform would imply that the probability of being in any particular range, as long as this range is the same, is equal. So if you have A is equal to 10 and B is 20, then the probability of being between 10 and 11 is the same as the probability of being between 11 and 12 and each of those probabilities will be 1 tenth. This is the cumulative distribution function where probability of being less than A is 0. From A to B we go up all the way to 1 and after that if B is 20, what is F21? That is going to be 1. All right, now we come to the most testable distribution, which is the normal distribution. Generally denoted by this, the mu is the mean. And sometimes you'll see S squared, sometimes sigma squared. That is giving you the standard deviation. Different normal distributions can have different means and different standard deviations. But what is it that is common across all normal distributions. What is common is that they always have a skewness of 0, which means they are symmetric. All will have a kurtosis of 3. And you actually need to remember the other facts shown over here. 68% of all your data is going to be plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. 95 is going to be plus or minus two standard deviations and approximately 99% is going to be plus or minus 3 standard deviations from the mean. 
The point that we'll cover on this slide is that you need to transform a normal distribution to what's called a standard normal distribution. With a standard normal distribution, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So if you have any distribution and you want to transform it, what do you do? You take the x value and subtract the mean. So if you have a given distribution where mu is equal to 10 and sigma is 2, so this is for a regular normal distribution, what is the probability that the return will be less than 11%? So what do you do? You have to take this 11% number and convert that into a z value. And how do you do that? So the x is the 11 minus mu is 10 and then so you have 11 minus 10 divided by 2. So 1 over 2 which is 0 0.5. So this statement is the same thing as saying what is the probability that the return will be less than so 0.5. So if this is 0 on the standard normal you come to 0 0.5 and if you look at the data over here, the z value is 0 0.5, which means you have 0 0.6915. These are probabilities. So this entire area is a probability of 0.6915. Safety first rule. The context here is that if you have two portfolios, A and B, one way of determining which is better or which is safer is to figure out the safety first rule which is the return of the portfolio minus some threshold level or safety level divided by the risk of the portfolio. So you will come up with a safety first ratio for both and then pick the one that has the higher safety first ratio because the higher safety first ratio is giving you a higher return per unit of risk.